What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, the show where I talk to people about their favorite scary movies. Today's guest is Liv Morgan from the Woo! WWE. Hey. Hi. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Oh no, thank you for having me because I'm super, super, super excited because I love Chucky. <laughs> yes, joining me uh, to co-host this one is Chucky since Liv's favorite movie is Child's Play, the original. I had to make sure. The original. Yeah. <laughs> Did he name him? No, you know what? His name is Chucky. I didn't want to try to uh, force a different Got name it. on him and then come to regret it. You don't need to read about the wheel. Chuck yeah, cool. exactly. Don't fuck with the Chuck. Before we get into Child's Play, though, I wanted to ask you what your experience is with the horror genre. If you watched it as a kid, if it's something you got into later, if you just like a few movies. Yeah, Um. so I've been watching horror movies, scary movies since I was, since I can remember, really, to be honest. I grew up with four older brothers and they were always making me watch, at the time, it's so horrific, you know, I'm like five and I'm watching Leprechaun and I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Leprechaun Con's a good poll. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posy. As I got older, I found different reasons why I like it and why I think I'm so drawn to it now is because when you watch a scary movie and there's a bad guy, why is he like that way? It is very misunderstood. To me, that is appealing because whatever their reasoning is, they feel so justified, you know, in their mind. They're not the bad guy. So I find it interesting to just watch them from that perspective. Like, yes, I know he's the bad guy, he's doing terrible things, but something made him or her think that they're righteous in what they're doing. And I like to just look at it that way. No one takes a leprechaun's goal. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people about liking the horror genre, and I don't often hear that they like it because it gives a chance to look at movies from the bad guy's perspective. Yeah, and you kind of have a little bit of time. Like, you can be creative with it, too. You know, they might not give you all the answers, so it's kind of left up to interpretation. Like, what do you think affected him so badly that he wants to go kill all these people? You know, I don't know. But also, I love to be scared. I love to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Is Child's Play one that you've seen since you were young? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, one of my first horror movies, and I believe in um, possession and I believe in spirits and I believe in ghosts. So it was realistic in a sense to me yeah. that, you know, maybe this doll didn't get possessed by this murderer. You know, I don't know. It's not the most far-fetched to me, which seems weird, but it's really not. So yeah. it's just a little bit of realistic in there too, which scared me. I often hear from people that Chucky is the scariest horror movie killer to them. And that's from people who may not even believe in that kind of stuff. But if you do have a belief in that, it must be like doubly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, that could happen. Like, it sounds crazy, but that could happen, I think, at least. You know, I don't know, but definitely there's a possibility. So you saw this from a young age, and were you always just into the idea of a killer doll? Um, I don't know what my exact appeal to Chucky was, really, to be honest. Um, I think because he was a little bit funny. He's not mm. so serious or stoic. That was personality, which I was drawn to. What are you, fucking nuts? <laughs> It was just like it's different. I had never seen anything like that at that point in my life. Like a possessed doll that is, I don't even know how tall he is, like what, like two feet? And he just owns everybody. In, the, in this first movie, is uh, his height kind of differs occasionally because I think just the effects that they had, sometimes they would have an actual, uh, I believe like a little person they dressed person, up. And they had one of, um, I don't know if it was one of the actors, little sister, so she played um, Chucky in a couple of the scenes. That's so funny. Sometimes it works. And then other times there's, there's one shot when they're in the hospital near the end, when he climbs through the window, to get to Andy and he's walking up to the bed. That looks great. But yeah. then Andy runs out of the room and there's a quick shot where Chucky's in the background on the bed and it's so scary. It's like clearly a person in a Chucky outfit. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. He's so handsome. <laughs> he's so handsome. <laughs> Stop it. When she like realized there's no batteries in this doll, like I just put myself in her shoes and just what a, holy shit. There's no batteries. I don't even know what I did. I, I wouldn't, I don't know. I would have left the house. I wouldn't have been like, talk to me. I would have 100%. Like we're moving, Andy, sorry, we're leaving. I think that that's one of the best moments. 
you stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? Oh, this is so intense. He just like his face just his face was just so ugly and scary. It was just like whoa, he was really pissed off. And what a change in demeanor, you know? He just was so scary. I was like, it's wild. I'm scared of you no matter what, no matter who you are. If you could change just like that, I'm scared. Especially with his voice. Like I love Brad Dourif's voice acting. It's like kind of like a Jack Nicholson voice. No questions, just dry. Okay, okay. I caught it. His screaming is just like. Ah! <laughs> So guttural. Yeah. It's really from his butt is broken. <laughs> his voice performance is so good. And again, it's something that you only get in that second half of the movie, but it's so memorable. Yeah. And he had many, many more after that, you know. In fact, if it was a movie, it would take three or four sequels just to do it justice. Since, you know, you're a little bit younger than me. So by the time you were watching these movies, I'm sure a lot of the sequels were out. Were you always watching the sequels right alongside the uh, Yeah, I loved you. I loved him going to the Foster family. Um, I loved that whole story. I loved Brad of Chucky, though, I think he's my favorite Chucky. Oh, yeah? I think he's more handsome in that one. I don't know. He just was so just cool. And Tiffany sung together. That's, like, my favorite scene, I think, of almost the whole movie is just Tiffany putting him back together. Yeah, that was the movie that came out when I first really got into horror movies. I think it was a little bit too early for me to see in theaters, but I would have had the VHS after it came out on home video. So Bride of Chucky does hold a special place in my heart just because it was like the contemporary movie when I was getting into the horror movies. The one that was out there now and the yeah. new thing, and it was so cool and like fresh and modern and it had Rob Zombie music in it, which I, I love. Yeah, a little, a little, <laughs> yeah. You know my cringiest part of that movie is like the hardest thing for me to watch. Uh, is it the lip ring getting pulled out? No. Oh, okay, because that always got me. It's when Chucky was drinking the fishbowl water. Oh, yeah, it's in the background. I, I just was like, you know, they never show him drinking it completely, but the fish was like really down there with this much. And I just was like, wow. <laughs> I don't know. To me, that was like the most disturbing part of the whole entire movie. It was like Chucky just, you know, pretty much just kill this fish. I wonder, is that the only animal that Chucky possibly kills? Because some killers walk around killing dogs. Michael Myers eats dogs, which is weird. Yeah, no, I can't recall Chucky ever harming an animal, but he did take that goldfish's air, yeah. water. <laughs> To me, I was like, wow, he's bad. Yeah, because you're a huge animal lover, right? Huge, 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 huge. So I was like, wow, he's the real deal. So Bride of Chucky is your favorite Child's Play movie? No, it's Child's Play, but Bride of Chucky is my most watched, though. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Now I don't know, because I feel like I, I was like, wow, I know way more about Bride of Chucky than I even realized. <laughs> I love all Chucky, so I just chose Child's Play just to be like, you know, the OG. That's actually what I really like about the series is that there's a lot of different things to enjoy about the different movies. They strike such different tones. And and that's something that Don Mancini strived for. Like when he made Bride of Chucky, he wanted to make something different. And then when he made Curse of Chucky, he wanted to veer back into more serious and like a gothic horror. That's why it's, it is one of my favorite franchises because like I love Chucky, the character, and I love seeing him go through all these different tones, but he maintains the storyline. Like he still talks about Andy and Andy shows up later. Play with this. Andy! What's on your least? Favorite Chucky movie. So my least favorite Chucky movie is Child's Play 3, actually, the military one. It's kind of boring to me. I thought um, Cult of Chucky was my least favorite. Nika she, um, ends up being Charles Lee Ray at the end of it, you know? Yeah, in the end, yeah. You didn't like that? Um, I like that. I don't know. I guess I, I'm biased because I feel like I just love Chucky so much that it's hard for me to give him like a bad review. But I just, <laughs> it, wasn't, it just wasn't my favorite. It just wasn't my favorite. I don't know. That movie really seemed to split people. There were a lot of people who really didn't like it. I personally loved it. Yeah? Yeah, I thought it was wild like insane but in a good way i did think that it ended kind of abruptly like i wanted more and they yeah. just kind of drive away but hopefully we'll get the tv series i don't know if you've kept up they're talking about having a tv series to continue that storyline to continue that specific storyline with jennifer tilly you know she just showed up at the end like getaway car yeah 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 oh, i would love to see jennifer tilly <laughs> how come nobody takes me seriously nice tits 
Thank you. She's great. And I like that uh, Nika is played by Fiona Dorf, Brad Dorf's daughter. So when she's pretending I to be Chucky. I did not know that. Yeah, dude, they look and sound so similar because I've, I've met them both in person at conventions and stuff. And like she when she laughs, it just sounds like Chucky laughing. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that makes it so much better. I gotta rewatch it now. Right? She literally grew up visiting the set of these earlier original movies, and then she got to be in them later. So maybe, maybe with that knowledge, maybe you'll enjoy Cult a little more. Cause you can see, especially when she becomes Chucky, it's like her imitating her father. I like that part, you know, and I like that they um killed the therapist. Not the therapist. I don't even know what his actual Oh yeah, the, the molesty the doctor. Oh my god, the worst. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, just stomping his head in. It was yeah, yeah, gnarly. Yeah. I, I was happy. Like, I felt like, I felt justified. I was like, yeah. So yeah, bringing it back to the original, you know, we don't get all these sequels if the original movie isn't as good as it is. It could have just been like a one-off movie, but instead it resonated with people so much that it spawned an entire franchise that's still continuing to this day and getting remade on occasion. Why do you think it resonated so well with people? Why did people latch onto this killer doll so much? One part of it is he's very vocal. You know, other than like Freddy Krueger, there was not a lot of um, nightmarish killer, you know, figures that were vocal. And I think that was very Relatable. Shut up, you idiot. So I think Chucky might be the most relatable, you know, just because he, although he was a vicious killer, he was very personable in a weird way. I've got a few skeletons in the closet myself. See? I think that, and I think um, I might be wrong, but I think he might have been the first, you know, doll possession. It's like the first of its kind, you know, like that specific was the first of its kind and like unique. It was definitely like the biggest one. I think that maybe, wasn't there a movie called Magic with Anthony Hopkins or something, but that was like a, a puppet or something. So I think Chucky was the first big mainstream, if you yeah. will, killer doll. Yeah, funny at times. He had good comedic relief. And I just think um people just liked it. Yes! In your face, lady! It's similar to why a lot of Stephen King's stories are successful. I think King is really good at remembering what it's like to be a kid and getting the audience to remember what it's like to be a kid. And I think yeah. that this first movie does a great job of that with Andy, who, one, I think is the cutest little kid I've ever seen. Incredible. When he makes his mama breakfast. Get the worst breakfast in bed. It was so sweet. It was so sweet. I used to make my mom breakfast in bed, too. I, I don't think I burnt the toast that much. Because of that, I was like, I'm going to make my mom breakfast. Do you think you did a better job than he did? Because his is not good. I didn't burn the toast. Okay. You didn't You didn't put like a, uh, just a mound of butter? <laughs> no. No. I'll tell you what. Why don't I eat this just a little later, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then you spend all this time with Andy, who is such a good little actor, even though he stumbles across his lines sometimes. That just makes it cuter. Hey, Chucky, wanna see my room? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he may have stumbled a little bit. Exactly. I think it makes him more relatable. And so the audience remembers what it's like to be a kid, what it's like to be that scared. And so, you know, in the final sequence, when Chucky's hitting him with a baseball bat, you're really feeling that terror. Also, when he comes back crispy, <laughs> yeah. still ready to go, I I was like, oh my God, that would have scared me the most too, you know? Hello, Andy. Yeah, Chucky does not stay down, man. Nah, no, no, he was crispy. He's been burnt a couple times. You just can't keep a good guy down. God, he's had probably the most varied deaths out of horror killers, possibly. I know Freddy's had a lot, but Chucky's been blown up, thrown into a fan. It was a fan of the roller coaster, right? Yeah, and three. What else? Had uh, He's been shot. I don't know, shot with a shotgun point blank at the end of uh, Curse by Andy. Oh, I almost forgot that Andy was in Curse. Yeah, it's like a smaller role. You know, actually, I take it back. I don't, maybe I don't think cult is the worst. Ooh. I did like to see Andy. I was like, wow, Andy, you know, it just, you feel like you know him. Um, it was, it was cool to see how he was doing. He was doing well. I don't think I like the replicas is what I think I don't like about that movie. It was smart, but I think that's where I was like, mm, you know, now there's like 50 of him. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I know that they originally tried to do that with the third movie, but I, I think it was like a budget issue, like they couldn't. So it was an idea that they had way back then, brought back for Cult of Chucky. And then, I mean, I find it pretty funny when they're talking about like, I've never felt so alive. Yeah, well, you've been alive for like two minutes. <laughs> it's, it is. It's funny. It's, there's good in it. You did say that you saw the remake. Uh, how'd you feel about that? I'm having trouble remembering it a little bit. Can you refresh my mind a little bit? Sure, yeah. It's, uh, it's like an AI-based thing instead of uh, any voodoo involved. Yes, yeah. 
That was like weird technology. Okay, yes, 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 yes. I remember. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't like. You prefer the voodoo? Yeah, I so prefer the voodoo. Like, you know, I don't know why. I believe in voodoo more than I believe in like evil technology, which is probably more believable, you know, but I don't <laughs> I want him to be possessed. I don't want him to have evil technology built in him because then it just makes him less of a human. Yeah, it makes it less relatable or like the goal of him trying to get a new body for himself. That's no longer present, I guess. Are they do we dembella? Give me the power, I beg of you. Yeah, so on the subject of the first movie, are there any favorite scenes or lines that have really stuck with you uh, your whole life since favorite you saw scenes. this at an early age? Or you know what? I'll, I'll broaden this to the entire franchise since we've been talking about all the movies and since it sounds like just Chucky in general is your yeah. favorite. Because like, for instance, for me, from the second movie, when the worker gets those eyes implanted in him, that has just stuck with me forever. <laughs> I guess what I said before, I love Tiffany Stone and the backup. Oh, okay, yeah, in the beginning of Bride. I love that new look. Um, I think at that point in time, that's the one I'd watched most of, so that became the most like um, known and iconic to me, and that's how I preferred him looking. Oh, with the stitches and everything? Yeah, just to see her, you know, do it herself. She did the voodoo, thought it it didn't work, and then it worked, and Alexis Arquette is just there looking crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was just good. It was good. Yeah, I really enjoy that beginning of Bride. You have a favorite scene? Too? Yeah, the entire entire final sequence where they get to the factory. Oh, the eyes. Yes, the eyes. Oh, okay. The but yeah, the sequence. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also really love the relationship between Andy and Kyle. Yeah, it was, it was very sweet. It was very sweet. <coughs> Jesus. Give me that. What the hell do you think you're doing? I wanted to taste it. Get real, it tastes like shit, okay? These things are very bad for you. You know, you don't often get a horror movie where the final sequence is two kids, like two foster siblings, helping each other survive and overcome. Like, that never yeah, happened. Yeah, they did it. They did it. Good for them. One of my favorite lines from the original film is uh, when Chucky's finally up and about and talking to everyone, and he goes to the, the voodoo guy's house to try to get, like, more explanation as to how to get out yeah. of his body. When he leaves, then he's like, I have a date with a six-year-old boy. I have a date with a six-year-old? Oh boy. He has a lot of good little like zingers, little one-liners. This one's like funny. It's, it's, I think that's what's just part of his appeal. Especially in, in that first movie, it's so uh, it's more understated than yeah. the out-and-out -out comedy that you get, like especially in Bride and Seed. Hey, hey, yay, hey, yay, hey, yay! Hey. So I like to ask people who I talk to to see if they can quiz me about their favorite horror movie. Woo! So I understand that you have some trivia questions for me about Child's Play. I'm ready. I feel like you're ready to. Well, I have covered this movie before, so I've done research in the past. Do you want it easy, medium, hard, hard, medium, easy, medium, easy, hard, medium, hard, easy? <laughs> Sounds like you're ordering eggs. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll go with easy, medium, hard and build up to the most okay. difficult one. During the time of part one and when Chucky was introduced, there was another doll actually in production with a striped t-shirt and jean overalls. Do you know what those dolls were called? What? Another doll? But it wasn't a movie. It was real life. In real life, a doll that was almost like his prototype was released. Oh, man. I know the, like, he was loosely based on Cabbage Patch dolls. Is that what you're talking about? No. So it was the My Buddy doll, right? My Buddy doll, which which making me think back with the new one, they allowed him to be buddy. So I wonder what happened if they went out of business and so they were legally able to do it. But, um, yeah, so My Buddy doll and the movie came out and the line never recovered. So I guess that answers that. They oh. just never recovered from the stigma of this killer doll in the same almost striped shirt and overall jeans. <laughs> Oh, that poor business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's do medium. Oh, man. Do you know how many days this story takes place over? Ooh, geez. Okay, and this is, is this including the opening scene with the, the police chase and everything? Yes, sir. Okay, so that happens, and then the next morning, it's Andy's birthday. Cool. He gets uh, a doll from his mom buying it from that creepy guy in the uh, alley who's like, ah, steal this. Okay, so he has it that night, and Aunt Maggie babysits him, and Aunt Maggie gets killed. Next day, he goes to school and go takes the L train, and no one pays any attention to this kid taking a subway by himself to downtown. Eddie Caputo blows up. He's taken into custody, and oh, God, is it just the three days then? Yeah! 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even in three days, so quick. I I was like, whoa. I had no idea. I would have been like a, a, a month. <laughs> you really broke it down. You really broke it down, like scenes day by day. That was really good. Yeah, I never thought about it, but I, I love movies where it takes place in a shorter amount of time than yeah, you but think you would never know. You yeah. never know. This is my. Hardest one that I could find, and I was like, I would never have known this. Okay. In the movie, in the beginning of the movie, Andy's mom was working at a department store. What was that department store? Oh, man. Ooh, got you. I, <laughs> this was my savior. I was like, okay, if you get some more, I don't think he's going to get this one. Well, then I'm assuming it's not a real one like Macy's. Uh, my guess is Macy's. Mm -hmm. Do you want another guess? Sears. No, it's Carson, Curie, mm -hmm. Scott, and Co. What the hell is that? Is that even real? You know, I don't know if it's real, but. But that's where Andy's mom works. All right. With a very stuffy boss, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The worst boss. The worst boss. It's my son's birthday. Mrs. Barclay, are you happy with your job here? Yes, of course I am. Then I suggest... Hey, that... chill out, would you, Walter? So what? I got one? I got one right? Yeah, one right. But yeah, the, I, I really... I was I was going through it, and I was like, I'm going to stop him. So <laughs> he still is that guy. When we were talking before we started recording, you were worried that I was going to try to come at you with some trivia. I know. I just was like, I wanted to like, you know, be prepared. Like, you're going to try to get me because I hit me with one. Hit me with one. Do you have oh, one? Oh, Don't God. Do it. No, it was mine. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I didn't have one. So <laughs> if I did, I might have I might have sprung it on you. No. <laughs> well, Liv, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about Child's Play, your favorite scary movie. Anytime. I love movies. You know, scary in particular. So anytime, I'd be happy to come and talk more movies because I love it. It's great seeing you on my TV more often. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And so for everyone else watching, we'll have more of these coming up soon. But until next time, be good people. Oh, yeah. Be good. Be good like Mr. Good Guy over here. <laughs>